Lucy, Goosey, she wears her hoop on Lucy, Goosey. Hey y'all, Jackie here, and today I'm going to show you how I made the staff belt and horns for my historically adequate Maleficent costume. This video is going to be short and sweet with slightly less shenanigans than usual. But if you stick with me till the end, I'll walk you through the historically accurate way I keep Maleficent's horns on the noggin. First, let's look at the staff. I wanted it to glow. So I bought a four inch plastic fillable snow globe and put in two strands of green battery operated LED lights. This was the simplest way I could think of to get maximum glowage with a minimum amount of effort and money. And for the most part, I'm happy with that decision. I found a broken branch while hiking one day that had one completely straight section that was perfect for this project. First, I needed to separate the two branches. I used a regular hand saw to split them at the bottom. This took a surprisingly long time and a lot of elbow grease. Then using an oyster knife, I started peeling off the bark. Some of the bark came off really easily. You can see how it's stripping with the knife. But once I'd gotten the strips off, it became a little more difficult, and I had to use my carbon tools to get it off. I sawed off the very tip of the staff so it was level, and used hot glue to glue the entire snow globe to the top of the staff. The ratio of snow globe to stick was kind of off, so I decided to add an organic vine design to the base to make it look a little more intentional. I started by scuffing up the plastic with some heavy grit sandpaper. This will help the clay to stick to the plastic. I started with a big chunk of DAS molding clay at the base. Then I began to build it up into a cone to cover the base of the snow globe. It unscrews so I can turn the lights on and off. From there, I began to separate out the vines. It was at this point I realized it was going to look more like a claw than vines, so I kind of rolled with it. Using water, I smoothed and shaped the clay until it started to look good. Once I got the basic shape, I removed the globe portion of the snow globe so I could fine tune the appearance without getting clay on the clear portion. It's a pretty messy business. Once I liked the way it looked, I set it aside to air dry for 24 hours. Handy tip, put it somewhere it's not going to fall over. Not that I did that or anything. <laughs> then it was time to paint. I used standard black acrylic artist paint mixed with a little bit of water because that's what I had on hand. I ended up doing three coats to make sure the paint was nice and even. Then, since it looked like a claw, I decided to take some silver acrylic and paint scales. I started at the top of the claws and painted my way down. It was at about this point that I realized the claws were cracked because it fell while it was drying twice. I had to reapply one of the claws completely and after repairing it, I decided I didn't like the scales, so I painted over them. Next, let's talk about the belt. The fashionable gown, or hoopalon as it's called, was generally worn belted. In the animated Sleeping Beauty, she wears it loosey-goosey. Loosey-goosey, loosey-goosey, she wears her hoopalon, loosey-goosey, loosey-goosey, loosey-goosey. Okay. Um, Please pardon that interruption. I just had a sing. I couldn't help it. Anyway, as someone who is rather rotund, anytime I can give myself a shape, I'm going to give myself a shape. So I decided to err on the side of historical adequacy and make myself a velvet belt. For the belt, I cut a strip of velvet five inches wide and as long as my waist measurement. I was dumb here and measured in my normal clothes. Don't do this. Measure with all of your layers on. It fits, but only just. It's a little hard to breathe. Then, with the right sides together, I sewed a half inch seam on the long edge of the belt. I arranged it so that the seam was in the center, pressed it, then sewed a half inch seam on one of the ends and turned the belt right side out. Then I ironed it nice and neat. Okay, I know some of you are clutching your pearls right now. I like to live dangerously, okay? <laughs> For those not in the know, it's not recommended to iron your velvet. It can seriously screw up the pile and you're better off just steaming it. But I'm impatient and have enough experience to know that if you keep your iron on a low setting and don't press too hard, you'll be okay. Note that this is cheap poly velvet, anything nicer embossed, and this process is a no-go even for me. Once that was done, I turned under the raw edge, gave it a press, and marked my center front and side seams with a pin. Then it was sparkle time. I bought this pretty brooch from Mood Fabrics, and I got some star charms and purple glass beads from Michaels. 
The charms were actually a bracelet and I had to break the loops to get them to separate, which was weird because it was in the bead section. In any case, I divided my belt width by the amount of stars and sewed them equidistant on each side of the brooch. Then I fiddled with the purple beads until I came up with a pattern I liked and sewed those on individually. With that finished, all I had to do was slip stitch the open edges together and sew on two skirt hooks and eyes and the belt was finished. Now onto the hard part, the horns. The first part of this bit is going to be an in-depth explanation of how I drafted this pattern. If you want to skip ahead to the less mathy bits, you can use the chapter markers below to go straight to the mock-up process. Like the majority of my costume, I'm drafting these horns directly from the medieval tailor's assistant. Unlike the majority of my costume, the instructions on drafting the horns was less than satisfactory. I got this image with a scale drawing in centimeters. There are no further instructions on the drafting. So I spent a lot of time mathing before I began. First, I drew a straight line down the center of a sheet of paper to the length of the inner horn, which I calculated using the scale to be about 25 and 3 quarters centimeters. And then I measured from the center of my head to my ear to get AB, or the outer edge of the horn. That was 16 centimeters. I drew a curve in the approximate shape of the picture to half that width, or 8 centimeters. I rounded off the edges to make it pretty, then I cut it out and traced it onto another sheet of paper to do the outer horn. The difference in length between the inner and outer horn is 14 and a quarter centimeters. So I extended the seam line down 14 and a quarter centimeters and flipped the inner horn template upside down to create the bottom curve. All right. Uh, Sheepish Jackie here. I have just realized that I was doing this wrong the whole time. Now, none of you should be surprised because I always do things wrong the first time, especially when I'm rushing. Um, but the original design, so this is the shorter part, the front. Um, I only did half of what I should have and I couldn't wrap my mind around it couldn't figure out how to get it on because I was thinking it was in four parts um, I don't know why I think if we look at the design here okay so this is the one I'm doing I'm doing the earlier one here and uh, get this as close as you can see you can see with my shoddy math um, I was thinking this center line here is a seam, so I just did half of it. And then I was like, why isn't this fitting? This doesn't look right. And it's because I was only doing half of it. So I went back and made a horn. <gasps> Yay! And when I put it on, okay, so this is really shoddily done. But whoop, field trip. Field trip. Ah, oh, there we go. So it does, it's supposed to cover your ears and um, I can't really get the back in, but it looks the way it's supposed to. It's also like super tall, which I'm really excited about uh, because <laughs> I'm not a subtle person and this is not a subtle costume and it'll be good. There. Um, it'll, it'll be good because the collar goes up to like here on me. <laughs> We need to have a tall headdress to go with the crazy ass neckline. So um, yeah, I am going to take this out. Um, it's just taped, I mean, really badly taped and um, draw this out on cardstock with seam allowance. Um, do two of them, tape them all together and try them on my head and just make sure that they look all right. And if they do, I am going to go ahead and get everything cut because then I can start sewing it all and then I can get done and then I will be a happy Jackie. I traced out my shape onto cardstock and then used my rulers to add a half inch seam allowance to all sides. I did two of each front and back piece. Then I folded up the seam allowances and taped the horns together. This was really tricky at the tops because the cardstock was so stiff 
so I ended up leaving those bits open for the mock-up process. Then I clipped them to my hair and tried them on with the gown to make sure I liked the collar to horn ratio. Then it was time to cut it out. First, the fillet. This is the band that will help me keep the horns on my head. This should be cut on the bias out of velvet. The velvet is grippy and cutting it on the bias will mean it will hug my head without any extra pins. I made a line the length of the circumference of my head on the bias, or 45 degrees, from the selvage edge. Then I drew a two inch line from either side and added another half inch for seam allowance on each side. I then used a chalk pencil to draw out my horns and added a half inch seam allowance. Then I cut all the pieces out. I repeated the process with the buckram as well as lining fabric, which is the same black cotton broadcloth I'm using from Maleficent's outer dress. Then I surged all the edges of the broadcloth and velvet to avoid fraying. After a quick test, I decided one layer of buckram wasn't going to be strong enough, so I ended up cutting a second layer to attach to the lining and then pinned all of the layers together and hem basted them. Originally, I wanted to use the matching trim for my gown to decorate the horns, but I was afraid it was going to be too heavy since the buckram was already so flimsy. So I opted for sequins instead. Starting about an inch down from the top of the horn, I drew equidistant diagonal lines around the inside. Then I spaced dots about an inch apart on these lines for the sequins. I hand sewed the sequins on, alternating between black and purple. Once that was finished, I turned up the bottom edges to hem up later. And then I pinned and hand basted each front piece to the corresponding lining piece. Velvet is slippery, so I wanted to take the extra time to make sure everything was secure. And then I pinned each front piece to a back piece and, you guessed it, hand basted that sucker. Then I zipped them through my machine using a half inch seam allowance. After they were sewn, I trimmed the excess buckram and gave them a gentle press. Be careful. If your iron is too hot, it'll melt your sequins. Not that I'm speaking from experience or anything. Then I ironed open the seams and flipped the horns right side out. I folded the velvet over the edge of the broadcloth lining and then whip stitched them down. Then all that was left to do was sew them together in the center, which I did with a couple of whip stitches. To assemble the fillet, I pressed in my seam allowances on all sides and folded the band in half. Then I measured four equal lengths of 100% wool yarn, which will get sewn into the ends of the band to serve as two sets of ties. Alternatively, you can use twill tape or anything similar if you've got it. I thought the wool would be nice and sticky and it matches my hair. Then all I needed to do was whip stitch the ends together and we were ready to rock. have it. 
my three accessories for my medieval Maleficent costume. Thanks to the ineptitudes of Joann's and FedEx, I wasn't able to get the correct kind of buckram for the horns. What I needed was millinery buckram. What I ended up getting was a lighter weight buckram I got from Mood, and it was way too lightweight to do the job. Even double, my horns were falling down. Anyway, I ended up adding wire to the insides, which helped, but I was annoyed that I had to go through all that extra effort. I'm also not in love with the sequin design. It feels a lot more cosplay than historical. They don't look bad, but in the future, I plan to make a separate set of horns using the trim I wanted to use and the correct kind of buckram. I will feel much better about it. The staff has proven to be a little bit of a pain. It's fallen over and broken twice, and I've had to repair it. If you're going to go this route, remember that it's top heavy, and make sure that you have a safe place to store it. I don't, and it's bitten me in the tuchus. I'm also still debating whether I want to add some sparkle to the base of the claw. What do y'all think? Leave me a comment down below and let me know, because I am being super indecisive about it. Despite the issues, I'm so thrilled with these pieces. Although they're less historical than the rest of my costume, I think they add a really fun layer to it. And who doesn't want a glowy stick that you can hit people with? All right, welcome to La Salle de Bain. Uh, this is not the ideal place to do any filming, but I needed a place with a mirror where I could put my camera that wasn't looking directly into a window, so here we go. I'm going to now show you how to put your hair up in the horns. You need a couple of supplies. First, you need some straight pins and some bobby pins. You need a hair device. I like this comb because I can, I can get a nice part with it, but use whatever you have on hand. You need your horns and then you need a couple of hair ties and your fillet. And then for me, I also have my little Maleficent triangle. I'll show you what I do with this later, but this is basically a piece of velvet I cut on the selvage edge. And then you can't see this because the lighting in here is terrible, but um, I just surged the edges and then whipped them down to make sure that there were no fraying edges. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make a center part because in the medieval era, in the 15th century, which we're dealing with right now, we are middle parting. So I'm going to do the best I can here. And then you want to get it down the center too, because what we're going to do is plate our hair in two. Okay. Ooh, she is crazy this morning. There. Okay. And then I like to handle one at a time. So I'm just going to put that there to get it out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to plate our hair into two plates up here. And when you do this, you don't want to braid it this way, right? You don't want to braid it down because then when you pull it up, you're going to have this weird little bubble, or at least I do with my crazy thick hair. So I'm actually going to use my comb or, you know, just lose it all. Okay. And it's going to go, so the fillet is going to go right here. So you want it kind of slightly behind where you want it to be. And then when you're happy with kind of the area, then you can start braiding. And I kind of, I don't necessarily braid upwards, but I tip my head so that the hair here is still pulling tension where it needs to go. Okay, so it looks a little weird. It looks a little weird right now, but that's okay. We'll fix it. So then you want to tie it off using whatever method you want. This is not the historically accurate method of tying your hair off, but this is what I have. So let's do the same to the other side. Okay, now we're looking good. Okay, so now we have to plate it up into buns. And then I'm gonna use regular bobby pins for this and just kind of roll this 
it does not have to be perfect, okay? Because this is all gonna get hidden. Um, the whole point of this is to help anchor the horns into your head. So, just needs to be secure. Doesn't need to be pretty. Now I have pretty thick hair, so I'm gonna pin this down pretty well, but if you have fine hair or shorter hair than me, you may not have to be quite as intense about this. If I really cared, I would make sure I didn't have any flyaways, but you know what, I don't. Now you're ready to go to a prom in 1999. Okay, so with your hair up, now we take our fillet. And again, this is just a velvet band and it needs to be velvet because the velvet is very grippy and it'll grip to your hair, okay? And we're just gonna place it on our head and then we're gonna take these ties and tie it in the back. And let me see if I can show you. Like that. I probably could have made these ties shorter in retrospect, but whatever. Okay, there's one and then two. And it doesn't have to be, you know, cutting your circulation off, but it should be snug. They're not 100% sure that this is how this worked. There's not really a lot of documentation as far as I've seen. Um, so this is mostly conjecture, but if you look at a lot of the uh, period artwork, you can see that these women are wearing these black bands around their head and it makes perfect sense to me that they would be using these to secure their headwear. There we go, that feels much better. Try not to tie your hair in with it, it hurts. So that's basically here. And so then what I like to do is I kind of tuck in the ends. In theory, this is all gonna be covered so it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so for Maleficent, I'm gonna take this triangle and if I'm doing more of a cosplay, then I can just take this triangle and fit it under the fillet like this to make her widow's peak. You know, and I can just adjust it to where I need it to be. I don't even need to pin it because the velvet just, just sticks to itself. You know, I could pin it if I wanted. But so, you know, I've got this awesome, like, of course it's there. I'm not behaving right now, but there. So now I've got her characteristic, you know, widow speak. And if I wanted to do something a little bit more historically accurate, I take it off. Okay. All right, so now the horns. The first thing I'm gonna do is use a couple of straight pins and you wanna use the silk pins, not the ones, not the quilting pins with the multicolored ends because you'll see those. Okay, and I'm just going to take a couple of straight pins and use these to pin the horn to the fillet. Be careful that you don't get your head in this. And then you'll just supplement with bobby pins. Okay, and then where it touches the fillet, pin it in. And the good thing is about these silk pins is that they have such a small profile that you can do it without a big, well, you can see that one, can't you? In theory, you shouldn't be able to see it. And we have Maleficent horns, let's see. There you go. I've, I've wired them and I'm much happier with the way that they stand now. Um, but yeah, so now traditionally we would have a veil going in between the cover and the back of the head. I have gotten my silk organza for that, but I haven't actually made the veil yet. Um, I will probably show you that in the final video. But look, see, I can, I can, you know, maybe could probably secure it just a little bit more, but um, that is it. That's as simple as it gets. Uh, took me a total of 15 minutes to put this on. Not bad. All right, I'm gonna chill like this for the rest of the day. That's about it for me. 
stay tuned for the next part of this series where I will show you the making of Maleficent's fashionable gown and give you a glimpse of the whole look put together. It's going to be awesome. Thank y'all for watching. Remember to smash that like button. It really helps my content get seen. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see y'all next time. I'm trying to get this to do the right thing. There we go. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> oh Lord, okay, okay. Serious face. Now on to the hard part, the horns. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I, do I, do I make you randy? Yeah! This video is going to be short and sweet with slightly less shenanigans than usual because I'm freezing my ass off right now.